unless you have biotin deficiency, which is exceedingly rare, then you probably will not benefit from taking biotin alone for your hair or for hair loss. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Joyce, dermatologist. Today we're going to cover five hair care myths that you really need to stop believing. And these are myths that I hear all the time, whether it's from my patients or people on social media. And we know that social media can be kind of crazy. There is a lot of misinformation out there surrounding hair. And because we all want to have beautiful, healthy, strong hair, I'm going to go over some of these myths today, why they're not true, and what we can focus on instead to keep our hair looking beautiful. All right, myth number one, I actually addressed this in a video on TikTok. I have this whole series called Hashtag Dermatology Lessons on TikTok. You should check it out. I go over a lot of myths there, but this one really struck a nerve with people. I mean, people were really upset that I talked about this. So myth number one is that cutting or shaving your hair makes it grow back faster, thicker, and darker, and no, that is not true. Now, I know what you're thinking. A lot of people say anecdotally, they say, well, in the past I started shaving and then my hair started growing thicker and darker and growing faster. There's just no scientific basis to it. Think about this. In our bodies, the hair follicle thickness is already predetermined. The thickness, the color, all of that is determined by genetics and hormones. Of course, there are a couple medical conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome or other syndromes where you have high levels of certain circulating androgens, like male hormones, testosterone, etc., that can cause your hair to look thicker. But in people with no medical conditions, shaving or cutting your hair is not going to affect the rate at which your hair grows back, nor it will affect how the hair looks when it grows back. Now, I do have a hypothesis about why people think it might look like the stubble is thicker. So we know that when you're shaving or cutting your hair, this is more so in shaving, you're kind of cutting off the hair at the root and that leaves a blunt tip. That's what we think of as the stubble. And that stubble, may look thicker and feel thicker because it's a shorter nub. And we do see some variation in the hair as it grows, meaning there have been studies that have found that your hair is a little bit thicker at the base, like what you would think of as stubble, but as it grows out, it gets thinner and longer. So that may be why some people think hair is growing out thicker, faster, and darker when they shave or cut their hairs, but it's simply not true. Myth number two about hair care that I want to bust for you today is that biotin is good for your hair. So a lot of people say this. They think that taking biotin supplements is good for your hair, whether you have weak hair, brittle hair, or if you're experiencing hair loss. And I'm here to definitively say, unless you have biotin deficiency, which is exceedingly rare, then you probably will not benefit from taking biotin alone for your hair or for hair loss. So the recommended amount of biotin intake a day is 30 micrograms. However, I was looking on the internet for various hair and nail supplements, basically these biotin gummies, biotin supplements, and they contain anywhere from 500 micrograms all the way up to 10,000 micrograms. Now think about it. The recommended daily intake of biotin is 30 micrograms, and yet there are companies selling you supplements that have 10,000 micrograms of biotin. And this is wholly not helpful if you are not severely deficient in biotin to begin with, which rarely are we deficient in biotin if we eat a normal, healthy, well-balanced diet. In addition to there being no published studies showing that biotin supplementation is helpful for hair growth in healthy individuals without biotin deficiency, actually taking so much extra biotin can have negative detrimental effects on your health. One thing that people may not know is that taking so much biotin can actually interfere with really important lab tests. For example, troponins. Troponin is an example of a cardiac marker that we look for when we're evaluating whether or not someone has had a heart attack. So when someone has a heart attack, they go to the ER, we draw their blood, and we look for elevated levels of troponin 1. However, if you're taking biotin, that biotin may cause your troponin level to be falsely low, in which case you might not be diagnosed. So that is a major problem right off the bat. The other lab tests it can mess with are in the realm of the thyroid. Biotin supplements can actually affect your TSH test so that it is falsely low, or it can show that you have falsely elevated levels of T3 and T4 thyroid hormone. 
in which case you'll be wrongly diagnosed with hyperthyroidism or too high thyroid hormones. So in any of these cases, it is actually really important to tell your doctor if you are taking biotin supplements because that can severely affect your lab tests and result in misdiagnoses and improper management. The half-life of biotin is two hours, but generally we recommend that patients stop taking these high doses of biotin 72 hours before any lab test in order to cut down on the chance that that biotin is going to affect their lab outcomes. All right, let's tackle myth number three, which is something I've addressed before. People think that air drying your hair is the best way to dry your hair. That's myth number three. I've talked about this before, but it is still very controversial, so I'm gonna address it again. So researchers have found that actually, air drying can be damaging too. Air drying and blow drying are both damaging. The reason why air drying can be damaging to your hair is because the water itself can damage your hair. They looked at electron microscopy studies of hair after it was being air dried, and they did find some damage to the cell membrane complex, whereas blow drying with heat also caused damage to the hair follicle. So what is a girl to do? Like, how do we actually get our hair to dry? The researchers concluded that the best way to dry your hair is to turn your hair dryer on the lowest heat setting and then hold it at a distance of 15 centimeters away from your hair and dry in a continuous motion, meaning the heat is not concentrated on any one part of your head for a very long period of time. I have actually changed my own hairstyling practices after reading this study, which I'll link in the caption below. Myth number four is this idea that you should brush your hair a hundred times a day to keep it shiny and looking its best. Now, I don't know who came up with this random arbitrary 100 times a day number, but I do know that over brushing your hair can be damaging to your hair. The hair can be getting pulled and tugged. It can become more dry and brittle. And while it is important to brush at a frequency that is good for your hair to get out the knots and to distribute your scalp oil over your hair, you don't want to go overboard with it. So I have pretty thick and wavy and color damaged dry hair. And after I shower, my hair is super, super tangled. So while I'm on this topic of brushing, my favorite brush is actually the wet brush. And I just found this on a whim at like a local drugstore years ago. It has changed my life because it really helps to gently detangle my hair. What I like about it is that the bristles are really flexible, so it doesn't tug very hard on your hair. It gives for a very gentle brushing experience. And I have like a full size one. I have a travel size one for when I travel and it's really affordable. I'll link to it in my Amazon link below. Last but not least, myth number five is that having dandruff means you have a dry scalp. That's actually not true because dandruff can be found in dry scalps and oily scalps. And I would say that we find dandruff even more often in oily scalps. Now, the reason why dandruff exists is because we all have this yeast called malassezia living all over our bodies, but it loves to throw arrive on sebaceous gland rich areas like the scalp. And when you have this overgrowth of malassezia yeast on your scalp, it can cause inflammation in the form of itching, redness, and also flaking that you experience in dandruff. You can tackle this a couple of different ways. You can use ingredients like purethione zinc, which is anti-inflammatory. You can also use things like salicylic acid, which is an exfoliant, helping to lift those clumps of dead skin off of the scalp. You can also use a prescription strength antifungal shampoo like Nizerol. All of these are different options that you can use to help treat your dandruff. And while we're on the topic of dandruff, I'm just going to throw in one extra myth here just for the fun of it. Some people think that you have to wash your hair every single day if you have dandruff. That's the myth, that you have to wash your hair every single day. And I'm here to tell you that that may not be true either. I mean, dandruff does get worse. It gets exacerbated when you don't wash your hair at all because then you get buildup of sebum and dead skin flakes at the root of your hair, which can cause a lot of problems with your hair itself as well as your scalp. However, if you are scrubbing your scalp squeaky clean every single day, that may actually work paradoxically against you and your scalp may think, oh my gosh, I have no oil on my scalp. I have to work harder to compensate for this lack of oil. And then your scalp glands, your scalp sebaceous glands work overtime to increase sebum production and that can worsen seborrheic dermatitis the medical term for dandruff. So find a cadence of washing that works for you. There's no one size fits all treatment. I'm not gonna tell you, you have to wash every single day or you have to wash every three to four days. It's whatever works 
for you. I personally have dandruff and I wash my hair probably once every three to four days. It really depends. Obviously, if I exercise, then I'll wash my hair sooner. It just kind of depends on my schedule and that week. So choose what works for you. Okay, so those were your five hair care myths, why you should stop believing in these myths and what to do instead. I really enjoy talking about hair. I feel like hair is the new buzzy topic in skincare this year and in beauty and I'm here for it. So as usual, please leave any questions or comments below. I love to hear from you guys and please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of fun stuff coming out soon. Until next time. Bye. Thanks for watching.